What's up, Devils? J-Dog back for another goddamn video. And this is my first video I'm recording from back from fucking Arizona. So I'm doing a little bit of catch up. So I was looking at my phone, and to be completely honest with you guys, if I miss a video or so, answer some questions, just re-leave them or whatever, because I don't even remember what the fuck video I left off. I'm pretty sure I'm pretty close to where I was. But uh, because I got a bunch of videos pre-recorded. And like only a few more left for this one. And I did it like it's a couple in Arizona, which will be up by the time you see this one. But it's my first one, and I'm just trying not to get caught up because kind of getting back on my fucking feet to where everything was with business, and everything. So ton of shit on my mind. So in case I missed the video, there was a cool question there. Just relieve it, goddamn it. But from here, I'm pretty sure this is the video I left off. Like I said, might have missed one or two. This one is the uh, best way for a new band to record a demo to release it. 761 fucking views and comments 54. And by the way, did you devils fucking see it? I'm at over a thousand subs. Fuck yeah, hells yeah, right? So I'm going to try monetizing my goddamn videos because, hey, why the fuck not? I did the uh, steps on YouTube already. I think I got to wait for approval or some bullshit because uh, they make the shit way more confusing than, than it needs to be, in my opinion. But anyways, I went through the steps and checked into this box and XYZ and that's a step three pending and you'll get an email in a month or some bullshit. So I don't know if you start to see fucking stupid ass ads that you hate seeing on my fucking videos. Sorry about that, bra bras, but hey, fucking they're going to throw free money at me. Then why the hell not? I don't want to charge you guys for shit. So... But I think you had to be at a thousand subs and said I was eligible, so pretty cool, huh? Hit that fucking thousand subs. I never, you guys, I never thought I'd even get a thousand subs. Period. Ever. Uh, that wasn't the uh, intention. Like when I posted my first video in December, I literally thought like I don't know, was thirty people gonna watch this goddamn thing? So pretty goddamn cool. So keep them coming, keep the hitting subs, and fucking keep the goddamn comments coming. And with no further ado, like I said, fifty-four comments on this one. Just go straight to questions. And the first one is from Forgotten Channels, and I don't recognize that name, so might be a new fucking commenter. Hey, J-Dog, just ordered the Divine Empire LP. What I like to fucking hear, that's what it needs to be. It's going to smoke all the fucking Tomb Mold and all the other goddamn uh, maggot stop releases. Garen fucking T. Blows it out of the water. Here's a question, though. Do you think Relapse Records has enough death vinyl reissues out? Last count was something like 20 to 30 different version, final versions of Scream Bloody Gore Alone. What the fuck? <laughs> is it really 20 to 30? If that's the case, yeah, that seems excessive as fuck. I didn't realize it was that. I saw we've gotten a few different versions in. I mean, if it's 20 to 30, yeah, that's excessive. But if it was five or six, I don't think that's excessive on a classic fucking album. Uh, when it's a newbie and you haven't earned your stripes, for example, Werewolf Records just did it, and we got him in the Vrethwin Werewolf, the self title, he did 20 colors all at once. I'm like, this is fucking dumb, you know what I mean, it's like, I don't like that shit, because it's like, well, number one, it's confusing as fuck, when, when trying to pull it around here, and number two, it's like, it's not a classic piece of album yet, Scream Bloody Gore, that's kind of different, kind of like what I showed you guys in my one video, like, like the Misfits Walk Among Us, I own like six different colors and shit, a classic album like that, it's almost kind of like collecting all the versions, the entire fucking rainbow, you know what I mean, 32 flavors of fucking uh, Baskin Robbins, or whatever the hell it is, that type of shit, on the classics, or your all-time favorite album, I don't think that's a big deal, but 20 to 30? Yeah, that might be a bit fucking overkill. Is it? If, if, I didn't know it was that many. I thought they had, like, I don't know, four or so. But if it's 20 to 30, especially because they're doing, like, all the albums, even the albums that I don't really care about, Sounds of Perseverance and um, Symbolic and stuff. I will say this. Since they came out, uh, I think it was, like, I don't know if I ever really listened to Sounds of Perseverance, but I did go back and listen to, like, Symbolic. And I'm like, this is, it's not a bad record. It's, just, it's still not death, and they probably should have changed the name. But uh, I remember just thinking, oh, that's fucking a turd from when I remember uh, years and years ago. But I'm like, it's it's a solid metal record. Maybe it's because, you know, a lot of shit that comes out nowadays is just I'm not that enthused by for the most part. But um, and just going back to the oldies, uh, I was like, it's much better than I remember. It's no fucking Scream Bloody Gore or Leprosy by any stretch of the fucking imagination. But I was like, it, I'm, it, it, it wasn't a turd. I was like, it's, it's, I was kind of enjoying it. Well, Greg Kelly, kind of a comment and a good comment. Like I like to see J Dog. Just gotta say that Centurion album, Cores on a Chaos Gods that I got from HHR, fucking slaves, slaves. You goddamn right. One of my all time favorites. Heard of them, but never dive deep. Thanks for the recommendation. That's what I'm there for. Again, smokes the entire maggot stomp fucking catalog put together in my book. That's a classic. Motherfucking ten. Six 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 skulls. Isn't that what fucking <laughs> SOD would say back in the day? Six 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 skulls. Uh. Joseph O'Donovan, what's up, J-Dogs? Who curates the sales on HHR? I remember hearing Velonic Sin and Doom and Hate It on Hellcast, so it's fine to see them in the 333 sale. I've been wanting to order from you guys, but I don't want to get fucked by import taxes. I've never ordered anything from the U.S., so I would be interested in how many people from Europe order from you guys 
from you guys. Uh, as far as who gets a three through three sale list together, actually, that's generally me. And in those cases, like you're saying, the demonic to the Dominican of Lonic Sin, uh, we bought all the stock on blackmetal.com a few years ago. And so we, everything they had, you had to buy it all. So we got it really, really cheap. So in some of those titles, there was like, I don't know how many they pressed or whatever, but we would be like 700 discs left. So it's like, we're not going to sell these. As a matter of fact, I think those Volonic Sins, the Demon Haters, a lot of those, for a while there, we were selling them at $1. And the reason being is because, like, that's kind of what we negotiated with Black Model Comics. Like, we're not going to be able to sell all this stuff. Yeah, he's got some stuff in there that we can sell at full price. Like, dude, 700 Demon Haters? Like, we can't sell all these. So we, we put them at like a dollar to fucking blow up. That was like a few years ago. But it's because we got them really, really cheap. Because the deal was, whatever the fuck was, like, you got to buy everything. It can't be selecting titles. It was the entire distro we bought out. So uh, that's why those were in there, but I'm the one that uh, generates. A lot of times, it's just overstock. It's not necessarily because the title sucks. I mean, hell, I even think the Centurions made it to 333, and those are some of my favorites. So when you see 333, that doesn't mean junk. That just means either it's a slow mover or it's overstocked. But sometimes there's some absolute gems in there. Uh, as far as, uh, yeah, people order from Europe from us every single day. Uh, as far as the general thumb, what we do is we just put a lower value on the customs form to kind of help out. So if we, like you order like two LPs and a CD, we'll put like... Now we've upped it a little bit because they kind of caught on to that shit in the last, ever since this COVID and shit, the laws are getting a little stricter. We'll put like $5 on LP, so $10, let's say CD, and let's say $3 on CD, something like that. So your total value on your package would say $13. So even if you were to get taxed on that, I mean, how much you can pay on taxes? What, a dollar or two? I mean, how much can you possibly pay on $13 value of taxes, right? So uh, usually that solves the problem. It comes a little bit from a problem like when we send huge trades, trade packs, or even purchase packs. And things. Let's say this for 50 LPs. Gets a little hairy in sometimes because uh, customs sometimes is like, yeah, we're not buying this bullshit, like falling for it. So, and those, usually those are fine too, but those are the ones that get problematic. The guy ordering five LPs or so, that's like, we get those literally every single day and virtually never a problem. So I wouldn't worry about that if that's the case, bro, bro. Got a fucking essay over here. Uh, from Mizothea666. I'll kind of get, he's doing a lot of commenting. Uh, he's talking about a lot of stuff out of Russia and shit like that. <laughs> uh, I think I remember saying stuff out of Russia is junk. I mean, for the most part, a lot of it is, right? The, the, I'm just talking about the music. I don't know about the people, guys. I don't know anything about that shit. Don't, don't know, don't fucking care. So I don't want to get any fucking talk about J Dogs against Russians or whatever. I don't know nothing about them. I don't have an opinion one way or good or bad. Don't fucking care. <laughs> Country look pretty cool in fucking Rocky Four, right? <laughs> I like, like that. Love that. No shit about it. Uh, so you're talking about that. Uh, and he's saying, unrelated question. Any cover albums you like? He puts Napalm Death, Leaders Not Followers, Part 2. Helped me discover tons of shit when it came out, and I still dig it a lot. Uh, I, I kind of remember the Leaders Not Followers, Part 1 and 2. I can't remember what was on there. I do remember they covered Insanity. I thought that was really cool. I was like, whoa, fuck, that's awesome. Because I, I think Insanity is one of the most underrated bands of all time. Go check them out. They're uh, Bloodfire... Was it Bloodfire, De Bloodfire Fate? So the, the demo, 85 demo, that's like one of my favorite demos. Why, why can't they? Bloodfire, yeah. No, yeah, Bloodfire Fate or whatever the hell it's called. Why, like, Bloodfire Death, Bathory, uh, no, Fire Death Fate. That's what it is, right? Fire Death Fate, yeah. Um, that's one of my favorite demos of all time. That's an 85 demo, I believe. And there's that debuted album, which is a couple different recordings. We did an LP version of it several years ago now, but um, all that stuff's pretty good. And then they, uh, that, their second album, Visions of Apocalypse, I even like that. Um, going back and listening to it actually a couple times, I'm like, eh, it's definitely not as good, but it's, it's still good. But all the stuff that they re that they recorded in the very early nineties and late eighties, cause they were kind of a weird band. Like they re-recorded shit and stuff was the EPs and stuff, stuff was compilation. Matt Harvey on his label for their while there, he did that, um, one disc. I still have it to this day. It's, it, that's good. Uh, I got a bunch of shit on CDR. Uh, Don of the Dead was the first one that got me into them. And, uh, yeah, I thought Sandy was fucking great. But anyways, I didn't even answer your goddamn question as far as cover albums. Uh, first one coming to my mind, not saying it's the best one or whatever, but I do like it, is uh, Hemorrhage Low, Low Songs. I still have this that CD to this day when I bought it. They cover, like, Cryptic Slaughter, Empatago. Uh, I believe in Pale Nazarene they covered. Uh, Parkus, Rotten to the Door they cover. A bunch of other shit. It's been a little while since. I think they cover Regurgitate. I know they did a general surgery cover, but I don't know if it's on there, but they definitely did cover something off the Chronology. I think that might be on like an EP or something. Um, just cover only albums. That's the only one that's kind of come to my mind that I own and that I like. I know there's got to be something else, but definitely, definitely that.
uh, from Goat Man. Great video, brother. You should do an episode where you show your sickest shirts, long sleeves, and hoodies. Show them every episode, Brad Rocks, the ones I'm wearing. This one. Is this a suffocation demo shirt? That's a goodie, right? Can't go wrong with that. So yeah, you get to see them. You get to see them and get the fucking video at the same time. Because I don't like have shirts that I don't. The only shirts I don't wear really is I do have some like XLs and shit that I kind of like hanging on to. I was like, yeah, maybe like as I get older and older, like I'm not the downsize, like in my 50s and 60s, and maybe I'll refit into them. But as of right now, there's I'm not squeezing no fucking XL. So, uh, so you get to see. All, I, I don't just have shirts where I just don't wear them for no goddamn reason. You know what I mean? Uh, any opinion on using old art on albums and demos? Stuff like from the Renaissance, Renaissance and other places. Um, I was never a big fan of it. There's nothing wrong with it. Uh, my biggest thing is kind of just like, if it was my band, I was like, why would I want to just use something out of a book that's being used? Like, for example, like all the, um, yeah, just like the medieval time stuff where it's a painting or whatever. You guys know what I'm talking about. Uh, all that, um, forget the, I'm drawing a blank, but yeah, I, you know what he's saying. The old fucking stuff that's used out of books and just captured on there. Tons of bands have done it. Like, for example, uh, Summon, uh, Summon album, um, Baptized in, uh, man, I'm drawing a fuck up, but Baptized in Fire. That has, a, you know, one of those paintings, and I think, what did Hate Eternal reuse it on Conquering the Throne? It's kind of like, it's not original art. Why would you want it? Um, but whatever, I, I can kind of see the mentality for a little bit. But the biggest thing where I where now I don't see is, like, like a lot of them have been used and used again, the same piece. It's like, why would you want the same piece of art as everybody else? And there's the fucking, the Baphomet thing. Uh, how many billion times has that been fucking used? Sarcophago used it. Dark Funeral used it. Bunch of random bands used it. It's kind of like, why, why would you put it on album and use that now? It makes no sense to me. I, I don't personally think it's like, shitty or anything i just me i would as if i was putting out something on my own i was like i, I want something original something i came up with uh, from gander remember hearing you say that forensic from Me mexico disgorge was the fastest album we want to know if you have heard of viscera infest and their album for viracos they might be the true winner of being the fastest. I don't know if I've ever said that they're the fastest. I think that the Forensic and Chronic Corporate Infest are probably my favorite albums from Mexico. But I don't know if I consider Disgorge Forensic the fastest album of all time. I don't know if I'd say that. I mean, it's definitely got some pretty fast blasts. Uh, and the vocals, you can't even fucking... I mean, the lyrics, you can't even distinguish with, with fucking... Uh, like, the actual, you know, like, what he's saying. You can't even understand what the fucking lyrics. At least I couldn't. Um... But yeah, I'm a big fan of those two albums. I don't know if I'd call it the fastest album of all time by any means. I don't recall saying that. If I did, quote me and tell me where I said that, but I don't recall saying that. I don't know why that would pop my mind. But, oh, and answer your question too, the Veracruz, I have not heard. The Viscera Infest, you definitely had in the shop. Uh, I probably looked past it like, ah, it's a modern gore brand that I probably don't care about. But if you say it sounds just like the Scorch from uh, the first two Discords, uh, Mexico, uh, there's a very good chance I like it. But no, I, ha I know exactly what you're talking about. I can actually picture one or two covers in my head. And, um, but I, I never listened to it. Well, maybe I should. If it comes back in, or if we have anything in stock, if I see it out there again, maybe I'll pop in the player. From Michael Weenus. Yo, j Dog, is there any uh, band or album you can think of that is generally, that is so generally dark and twisted that it trips you out a bit? Anything that is so overwhelming, overwhelming or emotionally draining that it's hard to listen to? Uh, I know some people have this experience with weak, Weakling, Abruptum, Lurker, Leviathan, Stryborg, Axler. What's your take? Uh, my take on all those bands, I don't like any of them. And as far as emotionally draining and shit, no. And as far as tripping me out, I can't think of anything yet, but I will say this. What I consider probably one of the evilest sounding records of all time, I've always said it, is Evil Incarnate, Blood of the Saints. We did the LP of it. That CD, what is it, two demos? I've always thought it was just a studio album, but I guess it's just their first two demos on disc. Uh, we did the LP. Our first, what did I say? That was our first LP or whatever? I should have counted. I'm pretty sure I looked, looked it up. And uh, so I can't remember, but I'm pretty sure our very first LP, uh, Evil Incarnate, Black and Sims, God's Disgrace, that's their first studio album. Uh, that's good too, but it's nowhere near as good as Blood of Saints. It doesn't have the same sound. I just think that's like, it, I mean, I wouldn't say it, it tripped me out or scared me. I just loved how it sounded. Like, this sounds literally demonic as opposed to like, a lot of these black metal bands, even the ones that I like, I'm like, all right, we're so evil and shit. But not just it's more screechy black metal guys. It doesn't sound fucking evil. I mean, some of it I like. I'm like, I, I think it's good fucking shit. But I mean, I don't, I don't really know if it sounds evil. It just sounds like all the rest of black metal bands, you know, you know, kind of high pitched guitar, fast. Sometimes, you know, if it's if it's if it's speed, like blast and drums and high pitched vocals. I mean, again, some of that I like for sure, like Marduk, Dark Funeral, etc. I like. But a lot of it, I don't know if it sounds evil. 
to me, I thought just evil incarnate. I thought that legitimately sound evil. Like if anybody didn't know what it was, like anyone outside the metal scene, if it was playing and they came in, I just even think that they would they would be like, this sounds demonic. You know what I mean? As opposed to they walk in on Dark Funeral or so, which I'm a big fan of, I think they'd just be like, what the hell is this? I can't understand what the guy's saying. I think that would be the reaction of the average person. Could be wrong, but yeah, so I always consider, as far as pure sound, uh, Evil Incarnate is the one that comes to my mind. From Zatochi. Hey, j Dog, what are your top five favorite Metal Lucifer songs? Have you ever seen them live? He gives me his top five. Um, I've never seen them live. I almost had a chance. I think they played in Chicago with, I think it was a time with Niflheim. I think it was with Niflheim. I got invited to go, but I did not. Uh, I would like to see Metal Lucifer live. I like everything by Metal Lucifer as far as my favorite songs. I'd have to say probably definitely Chainsaw. Heavy Metal Chainsaw. I like Dracula a lot. Then, yeah, I don't know, probably something else off Chainsaw or Bulldozer. I will say this. I do like it. I like the album. I like the song. They need to stop fucking recording and just don't even play anymore Heavy Metal Drill. Absolutely pointless. It's almost, it's almost like a goddamn bonus track on every fucking release they do. Like, you'll get, like, Heavy Metal, the new album, Heavy Metal Bulldozer's out, and then Heavy Metal Drill's on there again. It's like, what the fuck? Like, I don't need this again. Like, it, I mean, and I like the song. I was like, it's not even got, it's not even, in my opinion, it's not even your guys' best song by any stretch. I was like, that could, there's probably 10 other songs that like over it. I was like, even it was your best song. You don't need to keep recording it. One version, maybe a demo version, and a studio album version. That's all you the fuck need is. So that that was getting kind of, I wouldn't say annoying, but just kind of like, what do you guys, I don't I don't understand. Like, why do you guys keep recording this? It doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, from Jay Dinkins. Uh, the guy, he sent me an email. The guy with the coolest fucking dog. He's got his own fucking vest, which is fucking awesome. Actually, Joe, I think I just sent you an order today. I think you bought a Cannibal Corpse LP and something else. Hold that for you today, brah, brah. So you should have that by the time you see this video. But yeah, he's the one with the coolest little dog. Sent me his photos, which is awesome. I uh, love that Disincarnate album. I got it when it came out, though. What do you think of Brutality or Resurrection, Florida? Resurrection, Florida? I don't know it, know it. I remember listening to it like a few years ago, and I'm like, eh, it's okay. Brutality? I absolutely love their demos. I believe it was Area Death that did, uh, the what was it, Triple Disc or whatever? It's, it's the only thing I have. It was all the uh, brutality demos. I love that. The albums, I heard that that's what I heard first, too. And then when I got the albums, I didn't really like them. Like these are just tame and boring, kind of just like generic 90s death metal that was like it just lost all the character. I thought like the especially like the first two demos, I was like, it had just its own character, its own band. It didn't sound like anybody. So this is fucking great. Was there Lust for Sexes on there is one of the songs? Um yeah, so the all that whole demo release that area death, I thought that was fan fucking tastic. I have that and uh and it got reissued. Uh, I don't know if it had all the demos because it wasn't like a triple disc. Maybe it had all the demos, but maybe the Area of Death has some live shows, I think, on it. It's that big chubby case. That's what I own. But somebody else did the brutality stuff. We got it in recently. I forget what label. But it was the demos again. And actually, went out since for just a chip and grin. I was like, yeah, so I was like, it's been a little bit since I've listened to my personal copy. I was like, so I put it on the shop again. And it was, it, that was a few months ago. And it did not disappoint. I was like, yeah, these demos are fucking great. <laughs> Haunted Hotel Records, Ralph. <laughs> so he obviously knows what I meant. If it comes from Russia, it's fucking ass. And he put a shitload of ha ha ha's. And he so, said, so true. I used to get these Russian trade lists of like 1,000 CDs and never t heard of any of them. The few times I've got, I've taken some, it was garbage black metal that I couldn't give away. Yep. See, it wasn't just making it up. So he knows he owns a label too. Yeah. You, it's, yeah, but we get trades and stuff from them. It's either all fucked up. The discs look like they're 75 years old, even though their CDs haven't been around that goddamn long. And they and the stuff you do listen to, you can't pronounce any of it. Like you listen to any, even the stuff that I, I guess is supposed to be in English, can you pronounce? And then uh you just put it out the once. I'm not gonna sit there and say I've heard everything by any stretch of imagination, not even close. But the few that I listen to, I'm like, this is just unfucking listenable. It's not like, oh, this just isn't for me. I was like, this is complete ass. So but the band Pyre, I remember them. Uh, it was Pyre, and then there's uh the band Monastir that did what a 91 demo? And there's a Pro CD that came out a few years. That stuff's great. So there's some stuff that there's some good music that came out of Russia. I'm sure there's shit I haven't heard. Probably some obscure demos and shit that I haven't heard. That's fucking great. But for the most part, and what we got in trade, you're like, this is just complete fucking ass. Fanny Bulin, any plans to release any merch slash physical physical from decrepit Ohio? <laughs> I read something on Metallium about Hellsabring releasing their full 
length sometime during 2020, 2010. Sure did hear that, Barbara. Uh, I'm not going to say much about that because I don't want to get anybody's panties up in a bunch. Uh, that fell through, and it wasn't because of us. I'll just leave it at that. But uh, uh, Decrepit, Creation of, Sin, Creation of Sin Disc, and Acrimonium, I would love for those to come out on vinyl, whether it be us or somebody else. I'm a huge fan of them. Any you devils that haven't heard of those, go and get them. Absolute great discs. They're definitely long out of print. But it wasn't like it was a really known popular band. You could probably get them on eBay disc cost for a reasonable price. 10 15 20 bucks 20 uh, from somebody's collection. I would highly recommend getting them. Huge fucking fan. Uh, from Richard Wolf, do you remember the time Phil from Malevolent Creation made a claim that he intervened in a robbery and killed the robber? Also, did you lose respect for him? I, I do not remember that claim at all. Uh, uh, Jay Dinkins, uh, you know, guy with the coolest fucking dog. He's laughing at this. I totally forgot about that until I just read your comment. I guess that's true. I never heard that. Um, maybe I could ask him what I mean. I mean I'm, I'm assuming I'm going to meet him. Um, Malevolent Creation is playing here the 24th. April something, uh, end of April, I think it's Wednesday, I got tickets for it, uh, I plan on going, and um, I'll probably bring my, maybe Retribution LP only, because I think that's, that's the album they're playing in its entirety, other than Phil, is there any other original members whatsoever, um, I can always metal archives it, but I don't even know who else is in the band at the moment, uh, for anybody to, like, sign on their shit, you know what I mean, but anyways, I, I have met Phil once, I met him in on the Will to Kill tour, that's the only time I've seen him love of creation, I did have him sign a couple of my CDs, <laughs> But, uh, and I, I did actually talk to him for a little bit. I forget what I, I remember we talked about the band Cult of Azazel, and I remember, I don't remember why. Maybe one of the guys was there, or he brought him up. I forget, but I know I talked to Phil about Cult of Azazel, and I asked him about uh, uh, Brett Hoffman, like why he's in and out of the band. He was just telling me uh, the stories because he had a drug problem like that. He's like, he's a pain in the ass, and I liked his voice. He was just hard to work with. So I did, I did talk to uh, Phil for a little bit, but it was, Literally, so it was, I think it was 2001, maybe 20 years ago, so I, I barely remember. But, uh, fuck, who knows? Maybe I can, I don't know. Should I ask about that? It sounds like he'd be poking the bear. I don't want to piss the guy off, but, uh, um, theoretically, I guess I could, because I mean, I did bring it up. Like, that's another one. If I do bring my LP and I, if I know I can meet Phil, you know, record and, you know, post as a video for you guys. But the only thing with Phil is I don't really know much what to ask him. Kind of like, uh, because the only thing I kind of was always curious about was Brett, and I, and I'd asked him that before. So other than that, I kind of don't really have much. Hey, bro, like, can I get a picture with you and sign my LP? Other than that, I don't really have any other things to kind of say to him, I guess. I guess I don't because I just don't know much about him. But, <laughs> yeah, I didn't know that story. And do I res lose respect for him? No, I don't know. Is that true story? Is, he just, is that story true? Is he just pulling that out of his ass? Is he just trying to be a tough guy? I don't know. I mean, uh, I don't lose respect for him because I don't know nothing about it. I mean, if he's just making shit up, I don't know if I lose respect for him. I just think he's probably just – that's just – what, why are you lying about stupid shit? You just look like a fucking 10 year old tool, if that's the case. Again, I don't know. I don't know anything about it. <laughs> James Kwan, tape or tape or CD? I got you covered, bro. I love it. Yep, that's how I would do it. <laughs> I forgot I even said that, but I know what you're referring to now in the video. I do remember saying now that you said it. Uh, from Theogonia, J Dog. Has there been no repress of which tannic hallucinations by acid which I believe they would sell like hotcakes? I agree. Uh, we've actually repressed it a few times. It's definitely been repressed. Oh, yeah. There's two for sure, three pressings, something like that. I kind of lost count. Uh, but I actually talked about us repressing uh, Stone and which tannic on vinyl again. Uh, but our co our contract form, we only had a, each contract we had, I think, was for five years. I asked Chase. I brought it to Chase like five, six months ago. He said, yeah, yeah, we can. Just got to renew it with that, uh, Slosher. He's like, but the thing, because he just brought up, he's like, the new album's almost done, so we kind of talked about that. So I was like, this is that. Bottom line is, yeah, I do want to do it. And uh, Cole Chase, and I, 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 did he bring it up? I don't know. Yeah, I'll re-bring it up. Some, but yeah, I'm, I definitely think uh, Witch Tannic and Stone are due for another repress, a different color. Um, a lot of new devils out there, and I think they would uh, move as well. They're definitely long overdue. Layla Lover 90. What, that's actually a pretty good question. We're out of time. What is the longest time you have gone without listening to metal? Uh, times like now, probably, I would say. Like when I was gone out of town, whether it been in Vegas or um, when I was out in Arizona, I don't think I listened to any metal. Uh, maybe a couple songs here and there. My sister-in-law played in the song. She's like, what do you guys listen to? I was like, put, on, I was like, Should I put this on it. Put on Nunslaw and stuff. She wasn't a fan, to say the least. Uh, but then the last kind of like, hey, curious, we'll put on it. She was kind of on her phone while we're, we're driving somewhere. So I heard a couple songs then, but I was up there for five days. 
didn't listen to anything. And, uh, like, going to Vegas and shit, same stuff. Um, so, yeah, whatever I'm on trip, that 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 be the longest time. But, I mean, when I'm at home, like, normal time, I don't think there's ever a single day where I don't listen to anything. There might be a rare exception here and there, but I think every day I at least listen to something. So... From Gutter Christ. Hey, Barbara, we know everything is circumstantial and results, slash, et cetera, et cetera, vary for every single devil, but for you, what is the most difficult body part to train, and how often do you attack that body part? You know, it's funny, as uh, somebody just left in the video I posted today, I forget which one I want to tell you, left in the comments, I replied back to him, I was like, yeah, stop talking about, like, protein and eating and shit like that, just talk about metal only. And I just, I, I kind of responded, dude, I respond to everybody, like, I'll, you can't talk about it. Can ask me questions on anything, guys, because the thing is, like, it's just my name, so it's about whatever you guys want to talk about with me. So, like, it doesn't have to just be all fucking metal. And quite frankly, I, there's other things in the world I like other than fucking metal. Not too many other things, but other things. And the way I see it is, like, it's kind of like you're chanting with one of your fucking fellow devils, people in the metal scene. Like, if you're talking to anyone, like, that you like, it's not always about just metal, right? But you, those are the people you affiliate with because those are the local devils, the people you get along, like-minded people. So, whatever topics you're talking about, you're going to kind of generalize your opinion or respect your opinion more rather than some fucking just random Christian shithead, right? That's the way I see it. So we can talk about other things and get things from each other because I'd rather someone that's like a, like a similar mind, mindset as me and like um, in this lifestyle of metal, I care about his opinion rather than some fucking million dollar fucking dickhead in the media who goes to church on Sundays. I don't give a fuck what that guy thinks about anything. You know what I mean? Or some politician or something. I don't, I don't give a fuck what this guy thinks. Fuck him. He can fucking be hanging from a rope for all I care. So that's kind of like, if I was, oh, why are you going to talk about this? I answer anything. You guys can ask me anything about anything. And you ask me about training. Uh, so I asked you, ask you a question. Hardest body part to train? Uh, I mean, they're all pretty fucking equal. I would say as a general rule of thumb, I mean, as far as the most hard, as far as difficult, would be legs. But that's actually my favorite day. I actually like training legs the most. But uh, I would say that's the hardest. And as far as getting results and shit, I would say where most people lack is uh, back training. And that's because it's the hardest mentally to get a mind-muscle connection. You know, the, get a good stretch, contraction. Most people are just moving weight from point A to point B using their biceps and shoulders. And uh, it takes a while. It took me a few years to where you can really fucking engage and feel your back. For the most part, you're just probably slinging weight. Even if you're like, oh, no, I'm moving it slow and controlled. But you contract your back. There's a huge fucking difference. So I would say as far as a whole for everybody, the hardest that's going to be mentally to get to is, is your back. From Gutter Christ again. Was it the same guy that I just replied to? Yeah, they're very good. Another one for you down. One more for you, Barbara. <laughs> you can only keep one, one Asian. <laughs> Who you got? Immolation or incantation? As a whole, probably immolation for me. I think just because the whole, I'd like more overall albums, even though there's no incantation albums that I think suck. But immolation, like, immolation is definitely probably one of my favorite bands, like in the top 20 or so. Incantation, I don't know if they're one of my favorites. However, the album Onward of Golgotha is definitely would be one of my favorites. But outside Onward of Golgotha, you know, I love Mortal Throne Nazarene and uh, Diabolical Conquest and Infernal Storm. I like those albums a lot, but I don't know if they'd be my favorites as opposed to like Dawn of Possession, Here and After. Like for sure, like yeah, Dawn of Possession, Here and After, Failures for Gods, and uh, Close to the World Below, the first four. I would say all four, four of those are in my favorite uh, album categories. So they got four albums in my favorite categories. Incantation has one, others I really like. And then uh, uh, after a Closer World Below, the last one I really know is, um, we'll see how I'm after that, uh, Unholy Call. I know that album really well. I like that a lot. I don't know if it'd be my favorite albums. And then after that, nothing do I dislike, but I don't know as well. So their albums just I like again. And that's kind of where most of the later incantations, I'm like, yeah, they're good, but I don't really know them type of thing. So since I have more kind of like favorite categories, album by emulation, I'd have to put them in. As far as quantity wise, so I'd have to go with emulation. Who you guys got? Let's take the poll again. God damn it! We did another one. Uh, actually, I think this last video I posted uh, yesterday or whatever the one that went up recording recording the Macab versus Nabatego. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, I'll go over that reviews. Haven't got to that video yet. But yeah, who do you got in this poll? Emulation versus incantation. Put it in there. God damn it! Don't be a fucking pussy either. Type it in there. Actually, there was a lot of non pussies in the Macab one. I mean, Macab and the table. They're putting them in there. Just one. That's all you got to type. You don't got to say anything else. You want to ask more questions? Do that too. But at least tell me who do you prefer, emulation or incantation? 
And I will make this the last goddamn question. Uh, so, because, yeah, I'll make this the last goddamn question. Because it's kind of long here, even though there might be a few more on this one. Because I'm not at the bottom at all yet. Blazing Corpse. So, J Dog, have you ever done a bodybuilding competition or thought of doing one? Never have. Uh, have I ever thought about doing it? I mean, it's crossed my mind in the past. I would never consider it now. Uh, the reason being is, and I'll make this kind of quick because we're already 30 minutes in, is uh, genetically, I don't think I have it in my opinion. Like, for me, I see guys compete all the time at local shows and shit like that. And if, it, and if it's just because you really want to do it for fun, you know, go fucking head. But a lot of guys, they're super fucking delusional. I guess me, I kind of know, because I've been around the block a, a lot, like, and I've been to actual pro shows. A lot of these guys, they think, like, they know what Jack looks like or they know what impressive looks like. And either, A, they haven't seen it in person, they've only seen magazines or video, because it's way different when you see it in person. Or, B, they're kind of fucking... uh delusional and don't know what to look for. Like, they don't know the detail and quality. They just see a big guy. Like, if they see a guy like Hulk Hogan, like, oh, he's Jack, he'd be a bodybuilder. I'm like, dude, he would get fucking smoked and destroyed in a local show, no less a professional show. Like, he has zero chance. Like, uh, he doesn't have the genetics, the structure, enough like that. Yeah, he's a big guy, but that's not what bodybuilding is about. It's about the whole physical look. And uh, just genetically, I don't have it. And not to mention, I don't think I'm big enough. Now, I know a lot of guys say that, but I don't think I am in my mind because, yeah, do an amateur show, yeah, I could, I'd be fine for that, but for me, going to a show, let's call it like it is. You go to a bodybuilding show, for the most part, it's, it's kind of fucking boring. However, it's not boring in a pro level because you're seeing this freakish, fucking outlandish things that you've never seen before in your life, right? I mean, I've seen it several times, and I'm still impressed by that. But if I go to an amateur show or whatever like that, I'm bored. I'm bored fucking stiff. I'm like, why are these guys I'm fucking bigger than? I was like, so it's not impressive. To me, it's only fun to watch and impressive when you're watching circus acts. So unless you can kind of fucking get to that level to where you're just outstandishly freaky, which very few people can. You just don't have the genetics with it. Even with all the fucking steroids in the world, you just don't have the genetics to get there. Like most guys, if you're five foot nine, five foot ten, I promise you, with all the food, for all, all the training, stuff like that, you're gonna struggle. Not even struggle. I will go out on record and say this. I would say most people on this fucking earth, let's say you're five foot ten, you cannot be with uh, you take whatever the fuck you want, all the growth hormone, anything you want, you cannot get to 240 pounds shredding. I'm not saying 240, I've been 240 myself. Shredded. 3% body fat shredded. Most people can't get to that. And that's about what, like, Phil Heath's at uh, stage. I mean, I know Phil Heath's like 5'7", five, 5'8", five, or whatever, but he gets up to, I think he, he is competing as heavy around 240, 240, 245. That's enormously fucking big. Um, most people genetically just using that, and we're not even talking about muscle insertions, the quality of the muscle, how the muscle looks, your uh, aesthetics, your, your, your bone structure, everything, all that matters. We're not even getting that, that. That's a whole other fucking thing. Let's just talk about size-wise. Most people can't even get to that fucking level. And I'm definitely in there in that category. So to me, it's kind of like, eh, if you can't get to that, what's the fucking point? You know what I mean? Like, for example, if I was into basketball, I wouldn't compare, like some guys are like, oh, well, you're comparing yourself to the best, the best when you do that. It's like, well, yeah, well, I'm not going to compare myself to some fucking ham and egg or that's just, you know, doing the local fucking Joe Blow in the back of a goddamn vitamin shop. You know, who, who cares about that? That's like if you're if you're a basketball player and you're really passionate about basketball, I, me personally, I would compare myself to who's the top of the guy now. I don't know, is it, is it LeBron? That's who I would compare myself to. I and mean, if I'm like, I'm light years behind this guy, there's no way I'm near as good as this guy. I can never be as good as this guy. Why are you going to try to be do basketball at that level? Maybe just play for fun, you know what I mean? Uh, as opposed to some guys are delusional to where they're nowhere near that good, not even close. But like, you know, well, I'm better than Jimmy down on the block. I'm like, Jimmy, Jim, Jimmy, who gives a fuck about Jimmy? No, Jimmy's a fucking nobody. Like, set your role. Set, just, I guess I set my my views on everything a little bit higher. It's like, set your bar a little higher. Just kind of like, for example, another thing I'll throw out like people uh, as an example. You, you'll get these people, they're like, let's say they're overweight, they're fat. They're like five foot ten, don't work out at all, and they're 250 pounds. They're not, they're, they're, they're pretty fat, right? But they're like, well, I'm not that fat. Like, look at that guy over there. He's 400 pounds. It's like, so, cause he's fat. I'm like, well, no, he's morbidly, he's, he's absolute deplorable dog shit. Like, don't compare yourself to that. Compare yourself to something much better that you would like to get to. Don't just look at something that's where you can always find somebody worse. So it's like, I use this scale in the other way. I don't look at shit like, well, yeah, there's people, cause people say that to me all the time. Like, people at the gym say, yeah, you should compete. So, like, you're better than so and so. You can blow away so and so at the gym. So, I'm like, but he's, but he's, but he's a fucking nobody. Or, yeah, yeah, well, you're big if you're just walking around. Like, in Walmart, like, what, in Walmart comparing myself to a bunch of nobodies? Like, that, that's not, that, that's the weakest ass benchmark. It's just, I don't know, to me, that's just a weak mentality. I was like, I like to set my limits a little higher, you know, for any type of goal. So I just don't look at it that way. So that's, that's probably why I wouldn't. But when I was first coming up and I was like, yeah, let's see where we can go. And if I was genetically able, if I had the genetics for it, I would say, yes, I would have at least tried it at least once. But for me, where I would want to go acceptable, 
I'm like, eh, it's just I'll be another one of those guys. Just let's do an amateur show. It's like for for what? You're not gonna make any money. You're not gonna get anything out of it. Um, and and I don't need approval from a bunch of you know what is it five six male judges telling me like here's what you look like. Well, there's maybe there might be a couple females in there to judge you too. But regardless, I don't need the approval for anybody. You're not getting any money. You're not getting anything out of it. So it's like, what's the fucking point? So I just train for fun. You know what I mean? Just do it for fun. So. So, yeah, that's it for this one, Nibbles. Uh, I think there was a couple others, but uh, didn't get to them. We're already 35 minutes. This is already too goddamn long as is. I don't know how many of you guys like the really, really long ones, but to me, if it's 30, that's already pushing it. 35 is way fucking pushing it. So, leave the goddamn comments. Give me that. What was the poll? Immolation versus incantation. Goddamn it. Don't be a shy boy, shy girl. Put it in there, motherfuckers. What do you think? Leave the goddamn comments and questions, and I'll see you in the next one. Later.